Good morning, dear students. Welcome back to our online class. Today, we'll continue with the chapter United Nations and we are going to see the important organs of the United Nations. In the previous video, we have discussed about the two important organs of the United Nations, that is General Assembly. And then we have also seen what is the composition of the General Assembly. All members of the United Nations are actually the members of the General Assembly. The regular session of the General Assembly begins each year on the third Tuesday in September and continues usually until the third week of December. So let's have a recap on what are the important functions of the General Assembly. The main and the foremost function is to initiate studies and make recommendations to promote international political, social and economical cooperation to make recommendations for the peaceful settlement of disputes. Now, when we talk about disputes, already we have discussed this. It refers to a dispute between one country and the another one. To receive and consider reports from the Security Council and other organs of the United Nations and to consider and approve the budget of the United Nations and to the apportion the contributions among the members. So these are the major functions of the General Assembly. So let's see what, uh, sec what is a Security Council. Security Council is another important organ of the United Nations. And the composition of the Security Council is that the council in total consists of 15 members. It has five permanent members. Yesterday we have discussed China, France, Russia, Britain and the United States of America. And the regional representation of the 10 non-permanent members are also included. So, in 10 non-permanent members, 5 members are the representatives of Afro-Asian countries, 2 members are from Latin American countries and 2 members are from West European and other countries. And the last East European countries will be having only one representative. So this is the composition of the General uh, Security Council. So now let us uh, go through what are the important functions of the Security Council. The important functions is to maintain international peace and security in accordance with the principles and purposes of the United Nations. To investigate any dispute or situation which might lead to international friction. Friction means what? It's a kind of tension, you know, that exists between one country and the another country related to some matter. And it's the duty of the Security Council to investigate, to find out what is the reason, what is the cause that actually creates a kind of friction between the two countries and which leads to a kind of disagreement or difference in opinion or even it can lead to dispute, okay? And to take military action against and if the situation is so worse and if the it is required that there should be a military action, it has to be taken. Then to call on members to apply economic sanctions and other measures not involving the use of force to prevent or stop aggression. Okay, so this is also the another important duty of the Security Council is to call on the members to call on all the members means members of the United Nations organization to apply economic sanctions. Now, what is this economic sanctions? Economic sanctions refers to the you know, economic matters of the country. And it if the economic matters of the country, for example, if any country's economical status or condition is too low and the other countries need to support it by reducing the exporting tax upon them and giving them or, uh, you know, selling the products to them in cheaper prices so that they can afford and it will be helping them to improve. It can be not necessarily the products, it can be natural resources or it can be any other uh, materialistic or even non-materialistic uh, things also, okay? So, and to use of the force to prevent or to stop aggression. Now, when these things are being done, it is necessary that it should be done and maintained in a very friendly manner. It should not go to beyond the limits that where one country have a kind of feeling of, you know, aggression on the other country. Then to take military actions against an aggressor. Now, if after uh, attempting many times to solve the disputes between the two countries and still there is no kind of any kind of improvement or there is no kind of any kind of, you know, solution for their uh, problem, then 
sometimes the security council has to see and again it depends on the need of the time when there is no other options left then they will be going to take the military action against the aggressive country who is not ready to make any compromises is not ready to make any reparations etc okay so these are the functions of the security council and today we are going to focus on the third important organ of the united nations and that is international court of justice okay so let us see what is the international court of justice okay when we talk about you know in india we have supreme court we have high courts and all these courts are actually to solve the matters related between the country state people etc legally okay so the international court of justice is also the principal judicial organ of the united nations and it has uh, it's mainly seated in hague hague means it's a headquarters of the united nation on international court of justice and hague is situated in netherlands now it started its function from 1946 we know that united nations organization has formed in the year 1945 okay so in 1946 onwards the international court of justice started its functioning when it is replaced the permanent court of international justice which had functioned in the peace palace since 1922 now the what is the re- role or what is the main motive of this formation of the international court of justice the main motive is that to settle mm-hmm. in accordance with the international law that it has a dual uh, you know function that is to settle the international uh, law and the legal disputes submitted to it by the states and the legal dispute that is been one between one state and another should be uh, stopped okay then and to give advisory opinions on legal questions now uh, legal matters related to court related to law related to the pa- uh, policies and the articles or rules whatever it is it should be done in the legal so it is the duty of the international court of justice to function and take care and advise the people regarding sorry the members of the countries uh, or the countries itself regarding uh, the proper legal policies that they can follow it for the smooth functioning okay so this is uh, the main uh, you know duty of the international court of justice now let us have a look at the composition of the international court of justice the court is composed of 15 judges elected to 9 year terms of office by the united nations general assembly and security council independently of each other that means the court is total it is having 15 judges elected to 9 year terms of office I mean their course of time a duration of being in the post of the judge is of 9 years and and this selection of the court uh judges are actually done by the combined cooperation of the general assembly and the security council okay now second point in the composition is that it may not include more than one judge from any nationality that means the there might be more than 50 members or in the united nations organization as a whole and there will be only 15 judges now this 15 judges will be scrutinized from different countries based on the knowledge based on the experience based on the you know um, international law knowledge okay so and out of this 15 will be elected so this 15 judges can belong to any country okay so it may not include more than what and from one country there will be only one judge out of the 15 it's not like for example suppose from india if one person has selected again from india they will be selecting another person in that 15 group no it's not like that from one country there will be one judge and another judge will be from any other so 15 countries nationalities are being represented in this international court of justice then elections are held every 3 years for the one third of the seats 
and retiring judges may be re-elected. Now of these 15 judges, suppose and after 9 years, that is their term of office, and if they are going to retire and if they are willing to stand for the re-election, it is allowed. Beside this, elections are held every 3 years for one third of the seats. Now one third of the seats because why it is mentioned already it is told that the term period will be of 9 years. And this 9 years if any judge personally want to resign from the post or if found or impeached due to any some reasons or uh, retired or unexpected death. So these could be the different reasons and in that case there will be one third of the seats will be refilled after every three years okay then the members of the court do not represent their governments but are independent magistrates they don't represent to any government or any political group globally okay now because since it's the international court of justice obviously um, it doesn't support any of the political global political group or global political policy it is totally independent and bereft of all the influences of the governments of the different countries so the members of the court they don't represent to any government and they are independent magistrates okay what happens if they represent any government or favor any government so they can be more partial to that particular country and that is not you know justice can be denied to many other countries so that is the reason that judges are not expected to be dependent or influenced or in the favor of any political party globally or any political governments globally okay so this is what we learn about the composition. Now let us see what are the stay functions of this International Court of Justice. As I already told you, the dual function is that it functions are actually based on the sources of the applicable laws. That is, states have no permanent representatives accredited to the court. They normally communicate with the registrar through the minister of the foreign affairs or the ambassadors now the uh, it's not like the judge will be directly calling the prime minister of any country and telling this is not fine in your country and these are the decisions taken by international court against you no it's not like that actually every country is also having a foreign ambassador okay and uh, there will be also a minister for the foreign affairs which we call and the international court of justice will be in contact or representing or communicating to that foreign affairs minister related to the legal matters and the, that foreign minister will be communicating it to the respected people in their own countries okay so tomorrow let us see what are the important powers and functions of the international court of justice in detail so thank you have a good day